Okay, 120 over 80 is our normal. When do you start getting concerned? Uh, as a nurse, you should get concerned if anything reaches about 88 over, and you know what, the bottom number um, really doesn't matter at that point if the uh, systolic is really high. But 88 over 50, now that is really scary. That's when you call the charge nurse. That's when you call the, uh, the house supervisor. But really, what if Lance Armstrong had an 88 over 50? How is it trending, guys? How is it trending? Is there a massive drop in blood pressure like there will be with septic patients? Septic patients are funny, and I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I've been in the ER, and I've seen dozens and dozens of septic patients, and I know the classic signs. Really high fever, really, really high. It's getting high. We can't calm it down. We've given, uh, you know, uh, anti, um, what is it? We give Tylenol. We've given um, a lot of Motrin, cool rags. We stripped the guy, right? Still can't get it down. So uh, we, we're trying to do all these cooling measures. The patient's blood pressure all of a sudden tanks, and he's now ultra level of consciousness. The baroreceptors in the blood vessels have just popped open, and now there's no regulation because all the infection has gotten way too bad, and now the blood vessels can't even constrict on their own. So that's a resistance problem, guys. It's not a volume problem. So what do we do? How do we get the blood pressure back up in the medical field? What we do is we give them more volume, right? So let's pump them with a bolus, right? Let's give them a bolus of like, you know, 500 mLs of normal saline, isotonic fluids. Let's give them that bolus. Okay, let's see how that works. Now, does the patient have any renal impairment? Can we give the bolus, right? Or are we going to slam those kidneys and really cause them to be uh, come into acute, re uh, acute renal failure? You have to know these things about your patient. It's critical thinking, guys. And I have a great critical thinking course every week. Go to simplenursing.com and I can definitely help you out with that. But, guys, it's a volume or resistance issue, okay? <coughs> if your blood pressure is way too high, Let's say it's like one, let's say it's like 198 over like 110, okay? I think the highest I've ever seen it was like, uh, what was it, like 250 over like 120? And we've taken it again and again and again. Right side, we've taken it left side, we've taken it on the calf, we've taken it on the other calf, we took it on the thigh, we took it on the forearm. But that volume and resistance were way too high. So what should we do? To bring this blood pressure down, what should we do? That's right, you're going to decrease the volume first. We're going to give Lasix, right? Diuretics, get all that volume out of the blood. Why not, right? Uh, we can also give a, uh, let's see here, we can give a beta, well not beta blocker, we can give a um, calcium channel blocker, right? Get rid of all that resistance. Relax, guys. Relax the, uh, the heart, right? Get rid of all that calcium. Relax the heart. So we already did two things right there to bring down that blood pressure. Hopefully that makes sense a little more. So whenever you guys see your patient with a 120 over 80, that's okay. But really, how are they trending? Because my blood pressure is usually 96 over 56. And uh, I've had a lot of inexperienced nurses tell me like, oh my gosh, that's so low, right? <laughs> but really it's not. As long as your patient is trending there, and as long as really there are no signs and symptoms of your patient being in a deficit or an overload, um, then that's okay. So deficit, overload. Okay. So how would your patient look at 80 or 50 blood pressure? What's happening? We don't have enough blood volume, right? No more volume. So your patient's going to be probably pale. Not enough hemoglobin to the skin. Not enough oxygen, because what blood carries oxygen, right? Cool. So we're going to be pale. Uh, we're going to be a little lethargic. Um, if, we're di if we're dehydrated, what if we have this blood pressure, but when we stand up, we have that blood pressure. 
What does that mean? That's what's called orthostatic hypertension. Hypotension. It's also called syncope if you pass out. So we take three blood pressures. Okay? And it looks like this, really. We take three blood pressures. One of you um, laying down, one of you sitting up, and one of you standing. Why do we do that? We want to see how much the body's compensating. Does the body compensate on position changes? So your patient comes in for dehydration. Nurse on the med surge floor says, great, hey, my patient has like a 120 over 80 blood pressure. Wow, that's so good. He came in with like, you know, a 90 or an 89. And you know, we pumped him with a bunch of fluid. That's great, you know. <laughs> but patient wants to get up to use the restroom. So you said, yeah, go ahead, you know, the CNA's texting on their cell phone, and um, the patient is, you know, getting up to, hey, you know, CNA, can you help me out? Um, you know, unlicensed um, assistant, or whatever they call them, patient care techs, patient care associates. Can you go help this patient with, just be very careful, he's kind of, you know, unsteady on his feet. So our CNA's are, you know, in the room, texting or whatever, it's night shift, right? No one's going to get hired on day shift. Um, especially as a new grad, but, um, well, you might, it's okay. But the patient now is getting up. Oh man, I feel dizzy a little bit. The blood has just shifted from uh, being supine, and the blood has been shifted now down into the rest of the body because position changes. So the blood's now going down. So what does blood have? Blood has oxygen. Your brain needs oxygen, right? What happens if your brain doesn't have oxygen? you pass out, and it's no bueno, and then we have a fall, now we have to do a whole incident report when your patient is in the restroom, being dehydrated, into the hospital for dehydration, goes and walks to the restroom by themselves, and then we hear a big boom, falls down in the bathroom, totally pale, totally weak, totally lethargic, doesn't know who they are, barely breathing, and that's really what happens with orthostatic hypotension. That's all really it is. Uh, what do we do with fluid volume overload? There is a CHF core measure for that. There's an uh, app for that, right? <laughs> like the iPhone. There's a core measure for that. There's a recipe for that. We give Lasix. We give uh, calcium channel blockers. We um, you know, limit them to a, a sodium-restricted diet, guys. Well, what else do we do? We live at them to fluid intake. We don't want any of that volume being in there. We're looking for symptoms. We're looking for edema. We're looking for JVD, right? We're trying to get that blood pressure to go down. Yeah? Does that make sense? Does it really? Uh, we're taking daily weights. Because if you guys remember from your fluid volume, sorry, fluid and electrolyte days, that a shift of two pounds... Uh, I'm sorry, a shift of two liters, that is um, about two kilos, and that huge, that's a huge, huge shift with your electrolytes. So your patient's going to be weak. Your patient's going to have a fluid volume overload, okay? So let's get that volume down, and let's make a happy patient. Because in overload, you're going to have fluid everywhere. Fluid in the, um, in the interstitial spaces, right? in the spaces between the blood vessels. So you're going to have edema in the legs. You're going to have uh, fluid in the lungs. You're going to hear crackles. You're going to have way too much fluid in the blood uh, vessels themselves, just overflowing. You have way too much fluid everywhere, okay? So we need to get that fluid out, stop the fluid going in, stop the things that hold on to the fluid, and how do we evaluate if our uh, modalities are therapeutic. We're going to weigh our patient. Wow, think of that, right? <laughs> We're going to weigh our patient. Is the blood leaving? I'm sorry, is the fluid leaving our body? The patient lost, let's say, five pounds in two days. That's good, right? Because we're letting go of that fluid. Now, I know probably a bunch of you guys want to uh, lose five pounds in two days, 
But um, that's really all fluid loss. So releasing the fluid, hopefully it doesn't get too low to um, cause a deficit now. So there's really just a balance in the nursing field of what we want to do. So guys, next, we're going into respiratory rates and what you have to know about your respiratory rate. So let's do it right now.